Hi everyone, this is the goat here for grinderskill.com, bringing you a 6 max 100 NL video. I'm going to play two tables, and I haven't been playing too long. Just kind of sat down at the tables. And general plan for today is just to kind of basically kind of play an aggressive style of play here and lag it up. And we're kind of maybe reaching for a pip of about 30 and about. 24, 26, um, pretty flop raise. Um, apologies for my hood. I don't usually play on stars, so my hood isn't working here. But um, I can play without a hood. That's fine. Um, I do recommend trying um to play without a hood at some stage, um, during your grinds, just to kind of get a feel the game a bit better, pick up reads a bit better, and be a bit less reliant on stats. So it's kind of also a good thing that um, my hood isn't working. Um, table 2, uh, kind of, we could just continuation bet fold this now. First the short stack, just 4 into basically 7 say is fine. If he doesn't have a heart, he will fold it, and our hand pretty much has no equity based on this flop, so it's a good air hand to just go ahead and bet. And the short stack isn't going to cause us, cause us any problems there. I wouldn't be in too, too inclined to uh, barrel off there on any type of non hair turn. Um, we just don't have any kind of equity in the pot at all. There's no kind of turn cards that will give us any type of open ended straight draws or anything. And, I, and that also applies. I wouldn't barrel a short stack for sure, but I also um, wouldn't barrel a full stack either. This guy min raises under the gun. Doesn't mean too much. Definitely going to call and see a card. Re-raising is okay as a bluff. We have some blockers, but I think we have a lot more implied equity here when we call. His, I'm going to lead here. This flop is arranged pretty hard. Um, we don't really want to get bluffed off our hand, so we'll try continuation or basically lead here. Try down the try take down the pot, and there should be a lot of scare cards that can um, go to our advantage on the turn. Any type of really over card or any diamond um, or any kind of in, in between card between top pair and bottom pair can kind of um, go in our favor. Definitely spot where you can barrel there. If he wants to call us, I presume he has a type of weak hand. Any type of super strong hand or pure bluff might raise us. Um, with an inclination that mostly strong hands would raise us at 100 NL. You would be folding most of his air, I would imagine. 5 tree off here, a bit too weak to tree bet, in my opinion. I like that a little bit more equity here. Any kind of high card. Jack or over, um, as a as a one of my bluff tree bets or any type of suited connector. That's probably kind of standard stuff. Most of have kind of paired up already. It's gonna fall queen five off. It's a spot we can tree bet this here. If we got eleven is right. It'd be nice if this side had a kind of a pop button. Just don't know exactly what pot is. I think pot is about ten and a half here, and I think this is a standard continuation bet spot. And it's simple as that. I won't really. Um, I expect them to fall a lot here. We do pick up a double gutter, or sorry, open and straight draw. I think we can bet this one more time. I think we will be flooded by every pair in his range, so I think betting a nice round sum of about, no, actually about 28 will do the same job. So many um, pocket pair less than an ace will fold here. Yeah. That's what I find nowadays, it's like 8x will flow 10s. 10s will um, fold, kings that even fold there. So I don't mind that. Uh, Barring again, if I can bring up the hand history real quick. Previous hand. So basically, you can be floating us there with a 
with a lot of stuff there. We're obviously not too sure exactly what his um, calling range is there, but I think um, his range is reasonably wide that we can borrow there and we have a nice bit of equity in the pot here. That's my reason for betting there. On table two, just getting about five and a half or so to one. Short stacks in there, protects us a little from being bluffed off our hand. Well, that'd be incorrect. It kind of makes post flop more straightforward to play. Let's see. The pot is, yeah, okay. We'll float one street here and then reevaluate. So wait more of a leaning towards folding because this guy has bet into two people. Now I presume here that we actually do have the best hand. So I'm going to bet it. He's most likely holding us like 6x or pocket 7s. And um, I expect him to lead most of the time here. So actually a lot of the time he's check folding here. So I think a small bet just to kind of keep him in the pot and just protect ourselves from 6 out overs. I think that's kind of the way to go here. Just bet small. Hopefully he just can cause super light. Otherwise it's, it's not too bad just to take the pot down pretty cheap and protect yourself versus overs. If he has 10s, I expect him to bet the turn. I'd be very surprised if we got check raised here. It's quite a strange spot to do it. Um, it's kind of a bluffy line. I'm not too sure how capable opponent is of bluffing here. we say a flush draw, but I imagine he would bar it since the 10 is kind of a semi-decent scare card. So I think I'll just give him the benefit of the doubt for raising, you know, kind of small, just about two and a half X or lower. And um, if he was to bluff, he, he may pick a larger size. So that's my, my reasoning there. I think that's fine. There is some value, of course, in bending our eights there if he has a weaker pair and doesn't believe us and goes for a check call on the turn. I think that's fine. But we do want to bet there just to kind of protect our hands against his air and protect our equity in the pot. Ace line, obviously, that's a pretty standard fold under the gun. Don't think you'd have any problems there. Try to look for spots where we can tree bed as often as possible in a um, short two table video. No players really stand out as terrible. Just want to punish the, the limpers here. Huh. Very strange. Um, not pretty much a fish here again. Tr again three or four to one. Yeah, yeah, three to one. It's gonna call and be a fish. He checks here, which is pretty strange. We don't have any shot on equity or so, so I like just going for a bet here. I wouldn't be surprised if he does check hot here, but I think he can check fold a decent amount of the time. And this is a pretty strange play from this guy, which and our hand is pretty easy to um to fold here since our hand has no equity which led us to a continuation bet. And we're we were definitely going for a bet fold line there. Very strange play by opponent there. I'd like to believe he has a good hand. And I think, I think in general this play is pretty awful with pretty much everything in his range. So not the best start for a session. Okay, King 5 suited. Probably will play this. I will treat bet this guy. And we don't need to go much more than, I usually stick it to 10, but three times is also good. 10 just appears more of a round number, a bit more, it just looks a bit more strength. And seven deuce, we may as well play it just for the crack. Otherwise it'd be a long video. So this is fine if 
all three players, one guy in the button and the blinds are super tight. Um, you can raise there if you if you're happy enough to give up post flop. You can just probably never make a bet post flop, and you probably just might be slightly minus EV, but probably be about break even. The money you recover from them folding pre flop. Pocket tens here. Be interesting if Nostris kind of stays in. It's taking time actually on both tables. I wonder if he has a connection problem. Here we kind of have to bet here to protect our hand. We don't want to get buffed out to our hand by having maybe to check fold to a big bet. And we kind of bet auto rare here and auto quality hands. Pretty much, I would bet pretty much everything here in my range. And I think you should too. Any type of air at all to really dry flop. How many calls is most likely hand to be kind of uh, a weak flush draw, and I say weak just because he might raise up a ace high flush drop. Excuse me. And a lot of uh, pocket pairs or even whatever uh, 4x type hands you could have. So I could see going for a bet line there on the flop, and then maybe the turn will more than likely go check check, and then we can make a bet on the river for value. Depending on the uh, the cards that fall, ace queen here, very solid hand. Going to Johnny on the button cause you can kind of have a wide range if he's kind of that type of player. This isn't a marvelous board to continuation bet on, but more reads you can definitely opt to check fold here. And um, but we'll stay on the aggressive side here. You can definitely check for all that, that, that'd be no problem. And here, we raise a flop, we're definitely going to continuation bet here. Sorry, we raise pre-flop, so I'm definitely going to continuation bet on table two. The guy has taken a totally different line here, so if his last line was quite a strong line, then I expect his holdings to be much weaker here. High style seems to be a quite an aggressive player. So we're going to fold this hand here. Hopefully in the next orbit we, we can pick up a strong hand and go at him again. Um, hopefully he's getting sick of us kind of playing with him. And we'll call pretty light. 8-5 suited. Definitely going to raise that up. I'll stick to kind of three times there. Check 7 suited. Here's an interesting spot here. We can go for a really loose kind of squeeze here under the gun player, but we obviously don't know how exactly tight he is under here, but he probably will fall east queen and lower. So I think it's a good spot here to very, very rarely kind of make this play. You don't want to get caught out too much. And ace bong here on table one is obviously going to be pretty scared and play his hand pretty much face up. If he wants to stick around. Again, I guess probably we could check back ace tree, which I might do. Kind of have been slightly aggressive in this game. And just see what kind of peels off. Don't want to appear to be continuation bending all the time. And that kind of board kind of also hits his range pretty hard also, so I'm just going to check, uh, check all that there. Just want to follow to his turn back. And I think we had, oh, that's handy. We had 4 or 6 on this table. Obviously, it would have been nice if we had a squeeze at that stage, but we would have had, um, we could likely have been played back at putting the exact same move again. Again, I made that play because Big Maid can only, if he has a semi decent open range there, he is folding a lot of hands. If he opens 10%, he's probably only carrying on with Jacks are better and Ace King, which is. If I remember, it's about two and a half, three percent of hands. So he's folding, still a lot of hands there. So we can tree by him light, um, the first couple of times before he probably catches on and changes his, yeah, before he makes an adjustment to our play. And Ace Bomb more than likely just has a weak pocket pair there. Faker here, 
Um, I think we will flat this. Tense is kind of uh, in between a call and a tree bet. I have tree bet this guy once before the video started. Um, I had kings and I think he just, yeah, he folded pre flop. Big mate here kind of makes a squeeze. And tens works pretty bad. We have no kind of set odds. So I'm just going to fold it here. Here's style tight going at it again. Going to tree bet him here. We have position. So it's a much better play in position than out of position. Our hand doesn't play that well. If we call, the guy kind of appears aggressive enough that he could continuation bet flop and turn. And we could have a, a a difficult time, kind of a weak top pair. And since it's aggressive, we kind of want to take some initiative away from them. So we pull moves kind of a little bit earlier on the flop or, or pre flop. And obviously, this works well. Eventually, we pick up a hand and he will, he will kind of go nuts with it. He'll probably call a lot lighter. I imagine add 100 NL. The way they play back would be much more calling than for betting. They're much more likely to kind of hit a flop and then play back if they hit any piece of it. So I will keep, if he starts calling my tree bets, I will keep his calling range quite wide. I will keep that in mind. A lot of things I'm seeing nowadays, uh, 100 now and 200 now is kind of weak players min -ben. Preflop. I wonder if they're seeing the good players play like that on the button and they've kind of copied that style, thinking it's good and cheap. Um, this is usually be a fold a lot of time in table one, but we are going to call today. Again, his range could be as tight as 10%, and ace queen is still decent versus that range. And a standard bet here on table two. This is kind of a bad board for him to continuation bet a lot of his strong hands. And he has check raises before, so maybe he figures. Mm, we probably have the best hand here a lot of time, actually, with ace queen. We're going to check down. Not the best turn card for us. So don't think we get much value for another pair of pocket tens or nines or eights. I think we'll check behind for pocket control here. Again, not a superb card, but obviously we're definitely going for value here. Pocket 10s are going to cause, if you have some type of pocket 9s, I think that's a fine bet. And I'll call him on one street here. And I will call here on this queen hand if he tries to pull off a backdoor spades. I don't see a point if he bets in raising. I do we get called by worse. There's not many hands that he would check this flop with. He rarely has a five. So he's kind of stuck now. He doesn't probably know what to do. And he bets 14. I'm going to call here on table two. Just because we're getting a lot of um, get some pretty great odds. Yeah, that's the kind of hand I thought he would have. It's definitely not good enough to continuation bet the pot, since the the flop does hit my range pretty hard. That's unfortunate. Now we had a bit, just the same kicker. I think I kind of I I obviously played a fine, but I don't like his turn play. I think he can continue to check it down. Sometimes I will have type of a, a weak pair, but well, I guess that's kind of most of my range, but I'm pretty much never folding any kind of weak pair to turn, so his bet's pretty bad. He should be just check folding and hoping to go to showdown. And here on table two, this is just a straightforward fold. And it's even more of a clear fold. Three six also this might be playable if we have to play it. Mm 
Okay. We only need to go three times the big binding position, so we're going to go at this guy. We don't want him stealing our binds all the time. Just be careful when you're in the small bind opening up versus regulars that they can't take advantage of you. Even if they're bad players, they can cause you problems. I have a bad memory. I'm not too sure about three bayhem already. Definitely no more than once. I don't think. And if you four bets here, like Rousey fold, and we have no idea what his four bet range here is. Um, we obviously have been quite loose versus Faker and Desperado, if he's noticed. Um, but versus um, his four bet range, I presume, has a lot of them. Um, <coughs> Is pretty much full of his value range. You could be turning ace queen and ace jack into um, a four bed, and he's never going to fold that. So this is the table where perhaps my aggression is starting to show. So in theory, I should kind of tighten my range to mostly value hands, and then um, try to get a lot of value from that. Okay, I think we have a new button here on table two. I think the last guy left at home. Yes, it was something styled who was there before on the button. So that's a new person who we have new history against. So we can go at him, position, and he'd be none the wiser. You should be aware of that of new players. You might have a table image and then some players leave and you'll find you do have kind of a new image versus most of the players at the table. Any, any two cards is kind of proper on the button if the two players are quite tight. And I think they mostly have been. And since our equity is very poor, this is kind of the bottom of our range. So we can do continuation bet this. Entries is an easy um, call. And just not much we can do here on table one. And I don't know, you, you could have a set here, you can have some multiple draws. This guy checks to us, I think we can take this down. Yeah, so we'll just give him the benefit of down table one. One thing you should note if you're playing a kind of lag style and tree betting a lot is kind of you have to also, versus regs mostly, just kind of tone down your continuation betting. If you kind of hit some marginal hands, those are the kind of hands you should maybe try to take the showdown or just get one street of value from. Don't overplay your marginal hands. Like with that 9-3 I think I had off suit. That was a super, uh, that was like the lowest uh, part of my range there. So that that's an easy kind of bet fall spot there. But if I had a kind of, let me see. Let, let me go back a couple of hands. I don't know. I don't know how to work it. But anyway, if I have kind of middle pair there, we can definitely um, just kind of go for showdown or maybe one street of value. And we get three by here by Nostris, and there's no reason to think he's kind of messed around with us under the gun. So we follow this. We have no set odds. Um, you don't have to work purely on set odds. You do have some bluff equity post off if you make a couple of moves. But um, we'll just take a uh, conservative line there and fold. Again, once we when we hit a big hand here, we're kind of expected to get paid. Again, I'm not going to tree bet this guy. He just tree bet me a second ago. We've kind of gone at it maybe a little bit on table one. No. I expect if we do play back at him, he could cause us some trouble out of position and we only have a street. Nostris does seem quite aggressive. Hmm. This is kind of a conservative fault here with ace 10. We could call, we could turn it into a tree bet bluff. But I just would prepare have to, to have some position on this guy. I'm going to keep an eye out for his kind of opening frequency. Okay, we should know he's folded to us in the small blind of table one. 
So if he does open, start opening versus us, he may have a slightly stronger range. He won't have pure junk in his range. Hmm. This guy leads a tiny, tiny amount. There's a lot of scare cars that can come that we may be able to take him off his hand. So I'm going to call the street, because we could be actually ahead with King High. So let's just kind of play conservative. He's betting tiny. So let's just see see what can happen. Again, he bets very tiny. There's tons of draws out there. He may have made some type of gut shot straight, but there's not too many of them. And he could also be doing this with a 7. Hmm. Now, since he's bet so small, I think we're kind of obliged to call just to kind of also figure out what exactly what what exact type of hands he's kind of doing this with. Yeah. If we go here, playing a loose style. This flop kind of hits him much more than me. I think this is kind of a check back spot. And we pick up a gutter. So I think we can call one street, and we could easily have the best hand here also. A five isn't a great card for him to continue barreling on. Um, he may have given up on all his kind of bluffs. So I think we can just check this down. Mm, that's fine. Sometimes they show up with a hand like that. A nice nine here will open. Again, we'll open a, a slightly. We can open a slightly loose range here and cut off. Big May seems to be quite a tight player, as do the other two players in the blinds. So we can open quite a wi wide range and take advantage of their tightness. And just three times, I just three times the blind raises in the button cutoff. And I prefer kind of three and a half times or four times in the first two positions. You could argue with the A7 hand that um, we made better river off a weak pair. But um, a lot of the time he, he probably won't be folding many pairs. Probably fold the very bottom pairs, but there's a lot of kind of mid pairs he could have. Here's a spot here where I may consider barreling. Now, if he was to call this bet, I probably will um, check fold the river because it is quite a large bet. Hmm. Actually, if he does bet here, I may go for a check raise. Since I imagine he'd be value betting a 10 and a jack, and I don't think he can stand. I don't think he can stand them um, calling a shove. I'd be very surprised if he has two pair or sets here on this type of board. But there's only a jack and ten high. Can't have any type of other jack x two pair combos and ten x two pair combos. I'd be very surprised if he holds jack ten here. I'd be also very surprised if he holds that hand. So I think we've a lot of fold equity here in making this play. Hmm. Normally I expect him to fold that. That's fine. So we pretty much have a very aggressive image at this table now. And I presume 90% of the time he's making that fold. I wouldn't expect many people at this level to um, hand read correctly. I think that was just a quick call on his part. And if we take a similar line soon enough, you'd probably look us up. And we should be aware that he will probably check back a lot of um, rivers in position now since he knows we can check raise buff. So he can't actually Probably bet as Tinley versus us. Here's Eunostros again. I think this is a good spot to put in a 4 bet. He has kind of played back at us. And I think we're just kind of running bad here. And um, he insta shove, so there's not much we can do there. If we fold, it obviously looks like a bluff. So there's no point timing out. 
time it down like we're thinking about it. If we could get a nice hand here, then we'd be, we'd be going well. If we could get a big hand, that'd be perfect. We can't really, we should really tighten up now and play a solid game. Fortunately, that's not great for a video. So I'll, I'll still play as loose as I can some spots and just try to take a conservative line here. Kind of built up the image. We've put a um, phase one into action. We just need to follow through with some big hands, which have not be coming our way. Here's a spot versus a limper. I will raise this up in the big blind here. We don't want to share our equity with Hose Moba versus weak player. We just kind of want to isolate the weak player straight off the bat and Jack 8 suited is good enough for me. Pretty good board here. Just going to continuation bed, standard. Okay, and he puts in a raise. His limp call range can be quite quite weak. I'm not too sure exactly what he's raising here with. He can have a lot of work weaker flush draws. He can have some 10x hands which we are flipping against. Um, we can have a lot of kind of junk so I think this is kind of just a standard ship spot and then basically hope to get it in. There might be some full equity here. But at least if we're caught we're mostly in the flip. Yeah. Actually kind of favorite to win this hand. And that's nice. That's nice to win that bot. And he's reloaded. Hopefully he's tilted off and will tilt off the rest of his deck. Again, Nostra seems to be the most aggressive player at these tables. That's not a problem. Desperado seems to be a, a generally kind of tight player. He hasn't really done much. Johnny on table one has done very little. And Big Mate obviously made a hero call versus me. Again, I think his range is basically Jack X, 10X, one pair of hands. And he's obviously not a good guy to check for his buff. He doesn't fall down. Though he did time down for a while. I presume he was close to it. And now here we hit a hand. And I'll pretty much get all in here versus Big Mate. No problem. I have three bet on before here with a squeeze under the gun. Now if Faker was to call it on, that'd be perfect. And I think we'll just tie down a little bit. We're thinking about bluffing them, and then we go for it. Again, Desperado's been quite tight here. I think we can go for a buff here. And here, I imagine this guy could cause this light somewhat. So I think we can just make a straightforward bet here with Ace King. Yeah. I imagine Big Maid could call with a slightly wider range than usual, and this flop doesn't tend to hit that kind of range. Okay, Desperado calls. I think this is just a straightforward bet also. I don't think his calling range would be as wide as Big Maid would have, would have been. So I think this is a super dry flop, just a kind of bet forward here, try to take it down. So he's kind of having a good think about it. I don't know what he was thinking of. He was thinking of making a move, I'm not too sure. But that's kind of ace-king hand there. If he had a hit a flop, maybe an ace, and he had a dominating ace, he's definitely going to get all in plus and not think, not think twice about it. And so that's kind of the spot we were looking for. 
He's going to maybe call us with a wider range uh, preflop to our three bet. And he's going to fold that 9x nine, nine flop and below. It's pretty much a junkie flop. So that's nice. And just a note as well, if it was faulted us on the button here with queen eight, we can just min raise and try to steal the blinds. Both blinds are really short stacked. So we we don't need to um inflate the pot so much by betting six preflop. So we can just get away. Oh sorry, not six. We would have opened for three dollars. Um we can just increase our EV in the hand by just min betting and we probably take it down just as much. And if not, they probably increased their calling range a lot wider and then they get, get committed before they know it, post up, and have to give me all their money. Well, I hope I explain myself well enough to you guys. Just finished playing a session myself there for about two hours at 200 NL. Up a few dollars, which is good because I'm probably throwing away a few dollars here at 100 NL. I usually play over on AF Hotel Poker. I just like their software a lot. Not a huge fan of Poker Stars, but actually the software isn't too bad. It's a lot better than a lot of the Euro sites. I live in Ireland, so I'm, I have access to pretty much all the sites, and there's a hell of a lot of crap ones out there. Poker Forever being probably one of the worst ever, because they also have like no players playing there. I remember I got stuck with a bonus early on in my poker career. It took me months to get off the site. Absolutely months. I just stuck around to get my, I think it was 200 bonus. And then I left. I'll have a look at this hand here on table two to see how it played out. Looks like Bombalina just stacked his, all his chips off again. Can I skip that? Yeah, okay, I can speed this up. Flop and Bombardine, I must have checked. Check call, okay. Hmm. This guy checked, Hose Mobile checked his foot house on the turn. I don't know why. Doesn't really make any sense. But whatever. It's not like he was letting many draws catch up. There was pretty much nothing out there. And that just goes for a 3-bit here versus Desperado. Just fine, Desperado probably fold majority of the time. Lustrous is a very, fairly aggressive player. My for off, I'm just going to fold it. Has pretty much no equity, it's just one of those hands I'll pretty much always just get rid of. Of course, if Desperado folds, they, I think it's, I think the stats are you can probably go at any two cards if they fold over 66% of the time, even if we were to check fold every flop. I think it works out about a slight profit. So if he does fold absolutely tons, we could treat that there, but you have to also think about adjustments they make when we've treated that them previously. They will play back at you. If our hand was a bit stronger here, I'd also raise to isolate the under the gun limp. It's also a spot where you could do a squeeze here and re-raise the, the button here, who is probably the button himself, is opening fairly wide to isolate free man chips here. But I prefer not to make the play with such a weak holding, plus the under gun limper is um, fairly short stacked. And plus we're 150 deep also. Although it would be, it's a bit better to squeeze being 150 deep than being 200 deep since you can put more of a scare of people who have 150 blinds. And again, there's a spot here. This spot here, we can I get steal the blinds here. I opt not to make it a tiny raise just because Smart Fab is now in the pot. And we hit a flop pretty nice. We even have a, a diamond blocker. 
And on the left table, I opted to fold. I think it was king four. Just because, we, again, we have a fairly loose image at this table here. And with a guy on the button who just doesn't believe us. So and we should kind of tighten up slightly there. Should ask Cosnut Mobile just to uh, speed up there. We are making a video. We haven't got all day. Oh, very good. Those of you um, bonus whores out there, there's a 300 reload bonus on PokerStars now. Just deposit 600, get 300. Made my making this video today. I just got the deposit. I probably will not grind it because I don't play on this site. It was nice to um feel you're getting some free money, which I won't really work off. I think I think I heard it works out to be about 20% rake by the time you clear it. So full tilt as your standard. I think it's 27. So I'll just stick around there. Five six suited. We could make a loose open here, but we do have a troublemaker here in the button. And there's no big fish in the blinds that we could kind of ISO with a loose early position raise. So we'll just stick to the game plan of being a little bit conservative now. I would prefer to make this a more laggy video. But um we pretty much haven't really had too many hands yet, so we had to make do with what we had and develop a very aggressive um, image very early on, which is fine. Hopefully we get some hands again and kind of get paid off. That's mostly the plan with the, the laggy style. We kind of switch gears after showing off how aggressive you can be, how loose, and then And you should capitalize by just tightening up a fair bit. 3 5 off, we're not going to make a play here. Even though Nuts just does open quite a bit, 3 5 off just is a horrible hand. No well, top hair value, and top hair value in 3 bet pots is a pretty big deal. It could probably be much better there to um, re raise Queen Deuce offsuit. Any type of jack or higher card is a good um, tree bit hand. Six five suited. Since we're in position now, it changes things a fair bit. So we'll try take it down. He is opening. His stealing range is very wide. We haven't really not hazarded him now in a couple of orbits. So since I think we 4-bet, so you probably think we have knuckled down a small bit. Yeah, let's think about it. If he does 4-bet uh, us here, we'll have to pretty much try tighten up and hit a hand. I say more than likely here, he will hold. Since he's timing down so much. Maybe we'll think about the fact that we did 4 bet fold recently and know we could be, be more than likely have a quality hand here. King Jack's a good hand. Open that up. And this would be nice if big if we hit um, a king or a jack here and we'll pretty much get all the value in the world versus big mate. And unfortunately Johnny had to put in a small re-raise. But he hasn't re-raised anyone. Yet, I don't think he'd be capable of squeezing a bite. So, I think there's a standard fold versus him. Hmm. I wonder if Big May probably, actually, Big May probably has a pocket pair here since they're kind of both deep and he made such a cost. So, probably would have got a lot of money here on the turn versus Big Maid. But he did hit a jack as a scare card and he hit a lower pair. Yeah, if you had sevens, you more than likely would have calmed me down the whole way. And again, Johnny, I was correct. Would always have a tight range there. That was unfortunate. We definitely would have got a lot of money here from Big Maid, but we definitely would have bet the river there, so he didn't have a chance to check back his jacks or check back his sevens. Yeah, 
We definitely wouldn't go for a check raise there. He'd be probably quite wary of it. Okay, pocket nines here. It's a good hand. It's going to be tricky if we get three bet by Nostris here, but we we will call preflop. Makes it interesting now that another guy has come along that you could go for a squeeze. Yeah, I kind of expected him to go for a squeeze here, really. Uh, we don't have really direct odds here of 7 money, but definitely do have some value in our own hand. And that's pretty much as good as a flop as we can expect to get here. So a few lines we could take, we could call the flop, but it's going to get really tricky. A lot of turns versus aggressive guy, so we have to see what he can bet here. Basically kind of come to a decision from there. I'm kind of thinking of just min raising him on the flop. And he bets 30 into 40, which is fairly large. So I'm thinking of just committing here and just making a tiny ass raise. And hopefully he spazzes out with Ace King or kind of a 6x or so. Well, we're definitely unfolding here. Do have some backdoor straight draws and backdoor plus draws. If we are indeed incorrect. But I think he can squeeze here live. If he has A7 here, he probably is never folding. I think this is kind of standard. Well, unfortunately, he has something. Ah, it's hard to be perfect. Oh! <laughs> I guess not that hard. That sucks hitting the top of his range. Yes, I want a fair bit at 200 NL today, and I am proceeding to throw it away. That's a nice spot with Kings. We can win some of our money back. Hmm, interesting spot here. Johnny leads. I imagine he has quite a strong range here, leading to three people. So I think this is just a standard kind of fault spot. I expect Nas just to actually maybe make a player if he has any type of draw. There's no made straights in the board we have to worry about. I don't think we can bet this. Again, if he raises, it's more like a forward kind of bet folding here. If we had a set, we could check call, but probably most times I would bet to protect against a fort, a fort uh, heart. It's an interesting spot here, though. I can't see myself call this off. I imagine this guy can turn a lot of hands into hearts, so I am reconsidering. Back to shoved. I think we can call this off. I think he's kind of also pushing us around here, so I think this is fine. Hmm. Good. <laughs> and ace nine here, so also we can also have the best hand here. A lot of time in the continuation this continuation best this button you can call here with a side. I might, of course, just try to check it down instead of looking off anything. That's a nice card for us. The bets we will call. Basically, with that hand with the kings, I think you could possibly turn a hand into a bluff there. Um, it's a close, though. You can definitely fold that. I just felt, based on a kind of a dynamic there, that you could turn a lot of hands into bluffs there. And it doesn't necessarily always have a push when he raises. He could call another street with his not flush draw to kind of get some more value out of me. It's just unlucky. I 
I know we should do something table one here. And I think this is kind of a standard call. Yeah. That's a pretty bad bet from him. He should just like should just look to check it down. Okay, I think we've given the 300 quid to Nostris. That was not the plan. I think we'll just do one more orbit at this table. Unfortunately, we didn't get to capitalize on her on our lag play, but that's kind of the gist of how to kind of set it up. And then you hope to kind of hit big hands and get paid off there by them playing back at you. Um, I think my king's hand is fine. So is D nine's hand versus Nostris. Just with the kind of dynamic we had and, and kind of aggressiveness of each other. I just unfortunately ran into the top of his range, which is which happens. You can't second guess yourself too much. It's kind of those those things happen. And we'll steal again here with this. Let it go. Yeah, so I wonder what the damage was for today. We weren't obviously winning before I got stacked, so possibly a four buy ins, which sucks, but oh well. Just shows even the instructors lose. So hopefully here we get paid with jacks, this would be quite nice. We get in against an ostrich, it'd be quite good. And some money back. Maybe just tree bet this, we're more than likely just gonna cause tree bet. Okay. And we ended by winning the pot. That's nice. Okay guys, I hope I you enjoyed the video. We ran kind of bad. We shipped some money to uh, some hundred and now players, which you can probably try to get back for me. Okay, guys, good luck at the tables. Any just to go for grind school. Sign now. Cheers.